So in this video, we're talking about how to manifest your dream job, to have the ability to earn whatever it is that you want and do the thing that you love the most. More of that after your intro. Okay guys, so I just wanna remind you that if you wanted to learn how I created the time and money freedom to allow myself to do all these crazy things that you see on my channel, then make sure you sign up for this week's free workshop on exactly how I was able to go from zero dollars a day to $10 a day to $100 a day and $1,000 a day doing what it is that I love and following my passions below. Uh, but with that being said, let's talk about how to manifest your dream job. You know, th this job thing is, is such a very serious concept. I mean, think about this, dude. Like when I was, uh, when I was like young, like a young Asian kid, it was already predestined that I was gonna be a dentist, right? Like that's just how it was, you know, you're, growing, you're raised by like immigrants from the Philippines and you're like, dude, Mike, what do you wanna be when you're older? You could be anything you want as long as you're a nurse, doctor, dentist, a lawyer, or you're a family failure. So my entire life I thought, just because that's what my family raised me on, was my dream job was to be a dentist, you know? But was it, was it really? Dentists have like the number one suicide rates in the, in the world. It's a depressing job to be in someone's mouth all day. And the only reason why I was chasing it was for the money. And I started thinking about my like dental occupation a couple years ago because actually this was the year that I would have supposed to open up my dental clinic had I have continued the path of dentistry and continued dental school instead of leaving you know, the summer before dental school actually began. And I started thinking, was dental school and being a dentistry was actually my dream job. To, to be stuck in like this cubicle that I did not like, to work and pay off my student loan debt, and to maybe one day when I'm 30, 40, 50, 60, to have enough money to travel around the world and take my loved ones around the world. Probably not. So then I started thinking, okay, well, if I was gonna reverse engineer my dream job right now, on how this came about, how I was able to manifest it to the point where now we're doing several thousands of dollars a day in profit with my dream job as shown and documented in my podcast as well as in my first channel. How the hell did someone like me, someone who was literally supposed to be like a dentist, manifest this dream job? Well, I'm starting to think exactly what happened and I wanna break it down into certain things. The first thing that happened is I got really clear on my intention of what I actually wanted out of life. What did I, what, what, what was the life that I want, you know? Because the thing about, you know, manifesting your dream job is it's very hard to manifest your dream job when you don't know what the actual target is. It's very hard to manifest something that you don't know what you're chasing. You know, your manifestation muscles, which what we could call them, kind of works like a GPS or a pilot on an airplane. How many times have you been on an airplane where the pilot had no idea where he was going? How many times did you plug something in your GPS in the phone and you're just like, oh, I just wanna go in this general direction? No, you're probably like, oh, I wanna go to Chipotle. I wanna go to downtown. Oh, I wanna go to this club or this bar. Oh, I wanna go to my friend's place. Oh, I wanna go to Wisconsin, right? Which was like a place that we would always go to in uh, the Midwest. We'd go to this thing called like Wisconsin Dells. Crazy water park place, a lot of kids and teenagers and drunk college kids liked it. Uh, but you would not know how to end up in a specific destination unless you don't know what the exact target that you were aiming. So I started writing it down earlier on, ever since I was like 18, 19 years old, to manifest my dream job, what is it that I actually wanted? Um, and I remember when one of my first mentors like told me about this, he's like, okay, literally, what is the life that you want? Because to get your dream job, you have to reverse engineer from the thing that it is that you wanted. So I wrote down, I was like, okay, literally, I wanted to be in a place where I was confident. I wanted to speak to people all the days. I wanted to inspire people. I want, and he, I gave it to him, he's like, dude, this is all bullshit, dude. Like, what do you really want? I was like, okay, I wanna speak on stages. I want to have an online business that does X dollars a month. I wanna travel around the world. I wanna go live in Asia for a bit. I wanna live in Europe for a bit. I wanna live in South America for a bit. I wanna spend some time in Bali. I've never been there. I heard my friend go there and that looks really exotic. I wanna go visit my grandma in the Philippines. I want to go and backpack all through Europe and maybe you know, get like a Guinness in, in um, like a Guinness draft beer in you know, Ireland or to eat paella in Spain, right? I got really specific. I was like, okay, well that's the life that I wanted. Um, and I was just like, keep it there, right? 
Now, the second step is starting to open up what is known as your reticular activation system. What is a reticular activation system? Your mind essentially looks for the thing that it wants the most, right? Like an example for this is, you know, I, I remember seeing the law of attraction, right? And when I saw that movie, I was like, okay, I just got to think about the car that I want. And I thought about the car that I wanted, right? It was like, I remember it was like a three series BMW, right? I think, I think it was like a 335i or something. I think that's what the model was. 335i BMW, right? For some reason, when I thought about that, no matter where I went, I would see that BMW everywhere that I would go. The thing is, do you think that they just started making more BMWs? Do you think that they're like, oh wow, you know, Mike had this intention. He saw the Law of Attraction movie. Guys, all the fairies in the North Pole were like, dude, Mike started, you know, manifesting the, the 335, you know, BMW. We gotta start making more productions. Do you think, you know, the BMW manufacturer in Germany just started pumping out more BMWs because I had this intention? No. It was always there, but the fact that my mind was now focused on it, things that always existed are now showing up right in front of my eyes. And that's the exact same thing with opportunities, dream jobs, situations where you could work for the career of your dreams. They're literally hitting you in your face every single day. And if they're not, there's little decisions that would actually lead to another decision that would eventually lead to that dream job. The only problem is with that hitting you in your face, you never actually take action of it because you're not actually seeing it. So this is exactly what I mean and this is what actually encouraged me to actually drop out of dental school, right? So I remember when I put this intention right here and, um, and I remember I was just looking for it. My reticular activation was like opening and I was like, okay, just focus on this dream career of traveling. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that career is. I don't know what that job, but I'm not gonna get married to a specific thing which is another thing, you don't wanna get married to a specific job because that might not necessarily be the job. And if it is that job, it might not actually lead to the life that it is that you wanted. Like dentistry could not equate to this life that I'm living right now, for sure. So I had to always focus on the end in mind and just allow my mind to open up to all the opportunities that were existing inside me. So guess what that led me to? While I was in college, suddenly become a dentist led me to trying things like a network marketing company, it led me to starting things like selling on eBay, selling on Amazon, selling on Shopify, doing e-commerce, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, starting a YouTube channel. All of these things just started popping up, right? But all I realized was I was like, okay, I'm not gonna marry myself to anything because at the end of the day, I know where the end goal is. The GPS will always bring me to the destination. It doesn't matter how many, you know, for example, what do they call divergence? or detours that the road will take. It doesn't matter if like, for example, here in Bali, there's so many detours because of construction, right? It doesn't matter. If I'm like, hey, I wanna go to this gym or this beach right now, I go to as many detours as I want, but I will always end up into the exact destination that I inputted onto my GPS. And it's the exact same thing with your dream career. I literally had the intention of what it is that I wanted, okay? Like literally, I'm here in Bali. I'm making videos. I'm interviewing some of the most successful people in the world on my podcast. This is literally what I wanted. I don't care how many detours that I need to take. Now the problem that happens to most people is they marry to a specific job instead of focusing on the end destination of the feeling, the people that they want to surround themselves by, and the lifestyle that they want. Do not marry yourself to the job because if you constrict yourself to that job, you're literally robbing the universe from actually creating the creativity and the detours that will give you the best final product imaginable for you. Like even right now, this is far crazier than what I thought was possible for me, someone that was raised from immigrants from the Philippines, right? So I took all of these detours, man. I was like, okay, let me try network marketing. Oh no. Let me try, you know, doing this. Oh no, it didn't work. But it didn't matter because I knew that this was all part of the detours leading to the end destination. Um, but then it came to like a very interesting crossroad, right? And a lot of people actually face this and I just wanna share this with you because you need to expect this when it happens. And that was a very critical fork in the road where you know, I literally had a decision where I had to choose either dentistry or the path of unknown. And this is exactly why it's very important to not marry yourself to a specific career because of the magic that happens when you surrender to what's naturally happening already. And I remember it was at the point where one of my businesses at the time, it was like eBay and network marketing, completely failed. Not only did the network marketing business like shut down for various like 
things like, that are obvious. Um, but my eBay business died because I hired my sister at the time and she wasn't really, okay, I can't blame my sister, but like something happened, we had to close our eBay account. And just like that, I had no income streams at this point. But I had to make a decision. Do I want to actually pick dentistry or do I want to go to this path where there's nothing certain or stable at all, right? And it was a very scary thing, especially when it came to manifesting my dream job. It was like, here was this uncertain path that I had no idea what that dream career was. I just knew what my dream outcome was. And here was a certain thing where as long as I went to dental school, I was gonna get a six figure job by the time I was in my 30s, pay off my debt in my 40s and make my family proud, which is a very important thing when you're Asian, dude, you got to be a dentist, man. Your parents are Asian, you'll be disowned and they won't feed you. And it was very scary. I was like, what, what part do I do? I wanna manifest my dream job in my career, but I don't, I don't feel like I have what it takes. And this thing is so certain. It's a, it's a job, it's a career that's just stable. And you know, this is a safe path. And I remember uh, taking like the money that we had and t like also using my mom's credit card to go to a Tony Robbins event. I was at this Tony Robbins event that we did this crazy exercise. He was like, there was like 8,000 people in this room. He was like, I want you guys to close your eyes. I was like, okay, I was closing my eyes. He's like, I want you to realize that after this event, there was one decision that you know that you need to make. That it's a decision that you've been telling yourself you need to make. Imagine not doing that one decision that you knew you needed to do to change your life, to start that business, to fall in love, to say somebody you're sorry, to say somebody that you love you, that you love them. Imagine not doing that one decision. So I was like, okay, for me, it was like, following the path to my dream career, even though I don't know what my dream career is, and leaving the path of dentistry, um, I'm just gonna imagine that I focus on dentistry, right? So I imagine that, I was like, okay, fast forward to you're in your 30s or your 40s. How does that decision, what were the consequences of you making that decision? I started thinking, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm like stressed, I still haven't paid off my student loan debt, this freaking sucks but you know, like six figures and my mom and dad, they're gonna be so proud of me because you know, like they're Asian and I can be a dentist, right? And he's like, okay, imagine the look in your lover's face when you wake up and they look at you realizing that you know, you're just filled with all that negative feeling of you feeling the consequences of that decision. How do they look at you? And I was like, oh man, yeah, not too proud. And like fast forward even more. You're in your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, you're on your deathbed now. And I want you to imagine the room where you're filled with all of the people that you love. And not only do you see all of the people that you love, but imagine all of the dreams, goals, and aspirations that never happened because you never did that one thing that you knew you needed to do after going to this Tony Robbins event. And I started thinking about all the things of the places I could have gone, the, the life I could have lived, the adventure I could have experienced, the lovers I could have had, the intimate moments I could have had with like my partners, um, and, and just experiencing all that and realizing that none of that can happen. And so imagine the look in you know, the people that you love the most face as the doctor tells them that you are about to die. And then they said, and as you close your eyes for the last time, you almost see a vision of the person you could have been had you been not so afraid to do the one thing that you knew you needed to do after today's event. Imagine as you close your eyes forever to see the person you could have been, that person looking at you at pure disappointment for you wasting your life, for you not following your dream, doing things that you were passionate about, falling in love, pursuing your inner greatness, allowing yourself to reach ultimate potential. And as you close your eyes forever, reaching out to the person you could have been, that person looking at you with a big frown on the face, I want you to make the noise of what you would make on your last dying breath, knowing that that person could never be you. And 8,000 people shrieked. They're just like, ah! And that 8,000 shrieks just like, just jostled me to the point where I felt all these people's fears on realizing what it would be like if they did not pursue the uncertain path of their dream career and trusting the manifestation would happen. And to understand that even though there might be some detours, as long as you have a destination, you will always end up there as long as you do not change that destination. It was at the moment that I was like, dude, screw this, I'm not gonna become a dentist. And I chose the path of unknown and uncertainty and I just trusted that the destination will reveal itself 
And that's exactly what happened now, man. Like to build a business that grows exponentially where you know I only have to like put in three to four days a week, right? And I for those days I spend like maybe four to six hours a day on that. So it's like less than 20 hours a week. But to really live a life where I could continue to share my message and to create videos like this where I can allow myself just creatively be like this. And I could not have envisioned such amazing life. Had you have told me, Mike, what is your dream career back when I was 13, right? This is probably, I think, like the best case scenario and it plays out like that every single day. But the thing is, had I been so tied to manifesting a dream career instead of focusing on the end destination, I don't think I would have actually gotten here. Which is why if you want to, of course, faster way to reach that and you want to learn how I got that time and money freedom, then make sure you sign up for this week's free workshop because we literally have a 62-year-old woman the ability to manifest $160,000 profit in 90 days. So check out the link below as well. Check out this video and this video. See you guys later. You.